Now, Tom O'Brien. Good afternoon, traders. Hi, folks. I am your guest host, filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, and it is absolutely a gas to be here with you. It is a TGIF Friday. And, folks, for a TGIF Friday, what you need is a thought for your Friday. So here it is, the ultimate way to win the game of life, folks. It's found in only one thing, our ability to choose meaning in any life circumstances. Boy, that's important for a day like today. You got the, you know, Dow down 89. But, folks, what you want to do is you want to become the master of meaning. And when you do, folks, you will master life, not just life, your life. And when you've mastered your life, folks, you'll have an extraordinary life. You will have a life of meaning, a life of joy, a life of happiness, love, passion, success, and fulfillment. Become the master of meaning, folks, and experience life on your terms. Let's go check out the terms of the markets, if you will. We had the Dow finish down 89 points out at 12. 801 is where it closed the session. The s and is down 9. Closing out at 1342, we had the composite down 23 points, finishing out at 2903. We had the Russell down 11 points. The Russell was leading the charge down. We're going to take a look at that. That was down 1.4%, and it's all about Apple. Somebody told me this morning, uh, one of our uh, one of our listeners, that's the NBA. Nothing but Apple. You had Apple finish up green, up a quarter, if you will. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Let's go take a look at the uh, spies out here, because that's where I want to start. And we take a look at the uh, volume that we had inside the uh, spy on a daily basis. You came down today. You gapped down. You did 154 million shares. Now, yesterday up at the high, you did 148 million. Now, what it's going against and what it couldn't get to, what it couldn't break down, was actually going, taking a look at the uh, candle from February the 7th, folks. You see, we got 135 million shares down there. It couldn't even get down there. You know, we still have this gap up here. So it shows you the underlying strength that you've got in the market right now. Now, what we know is that a week ago, so a week ago on Friday, what we had was we had the spies gap up. We had all the markets gap up, if you will. We had the spies gap up. That was February 3rd. It was last Friday. It was because of the jobs report. doesn't matter whether you buy it or you don't buy it. It's a matter of taking a look at the charts to see where the markets are going, what information is telling us. And if we take a look at February 3rd, you gapped up on 160 million shares. Today, you come down. You couldn't get down and test. Well, you, actually, I think uh, we did. Let's see. The low on the spy. 133.77. What did you get down to today? 133.84. Couldn't even get all the way down there. About 154 million shares. In order to bust this market down, at least in the spies, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pick up some steam. You're going to have to pick up some volume. If I just actually go over to the index chart, and what we're taking a look at here, folks, this is the spy on the index chart. And what we're looking at, first of all, you're going to see this little golden cross, if you will. you got a death cross and a golden cross. That's where you get the 50-day crossing through or crossing over, in the case of the golden cross, crossing over that 200-day exponential moving average. You can see how the market you know, moved up before that. But that is one of the things that a lot of money managers will take a look at. That is the sign of bullishness, if you will. And you can also see ever since that cross, we've had this uptrend. We have had this ascending wedge pattern that's also kind of uh, forming, if you will. And right now, the actual support, if you will, on the uh, SPIs, the actual SPX, if you go over and take a look at your descending trend tops line, you would go all the way over to the highs in October of 2007, take that line all the way down to the May uh, 2011 and that is the line. We're inside this ascending wedge. We're inside. We're coming up to the you know real support at this stage right now on the uh, spies is going to be somewhere in this 13 and a quarter range or so. But you know it's going to have to pick up more volume. Let's go take a look at the uh, let's go look at the diamonds out there. So we're going to take a look at the diamonds. Put that up on the screen. And folks, hopefully you're following us on Tiger TV. Uh, you know because you're able to see my screens. You're able to see exactly what it is that we're taking a look at. We take a look at the diamonds. See what the diamonds were telling us. Now the diamonds here came off the highs. They came off with 6.3 million shares. So you did have some juice, if you will, coming into the diamonds. If we take, I'm going to blow this up, take a look at this range here, because here we had the gap, the gap up from February 2nd to February 3rd. So a week ago where this market gapped up, and we take a look at the top of the February 2nd high. The top that you had out there on the diamonds, the DIA, 127.16, what did you get down to today? Could you even get down there? 127.30. Couldn't even close the gap. Now, 
When you gapped up here, folks, you're gapping up on February 3rd to do 8.6 million shares. Today, you're coming down with 6.3 million shares. Still not enough to bust them down. That's in the diamonds. Well, how about the Qs? We said it's all about Apple. Nothing but Apple. That's the new player in the NBA, if you will. We take, let's go take a look at the Qs. And the Qs here, Qs didn't budge, if you will. Yesterday, you closed out at, uh, let's see here, you closed at 62.91. Today, you closed at 62.47. You made a high yesterday, 46 million shares. You come down today, 55 million. What's it going into? Well, you know, if you go ahead and you take a look at when we gapped up, we only gapped up with 36 million shares. And if you just take a look, even the February 3rd, you know, it's very important to take a look at that February 3rd candle, in my opinion. And the Qs are given a signal here because the high on that candle is 62.12. As long as the Qs stay above that area, that is another bullish sign out there. Let's go take a look at the small caps. I did say they were leading the charge on the way down. So let's go take a look at the IWM. That's the easiest way to take it. It's a way that you're able to easily pull up your volume. So on the way down, leading the charge, the IWM, the small caps, what do they do today? 42, uh, 42 million shares. What are they coming into? They are coming into 46 million shares. Now, the 46 million shares are coming into, folks, that's the February 2nd. That is before you had the market gap up. When it gapped up, it gapped up on 72 million shares. Now, what the, uh, what the IWM did was they at least got down, and it looks like they closed the gap, so to speak. Of course, there's another new gap that's open. And when I say that, what I'm looking at, folks, is the high on February uh, 2nd. What we're looking at is 81.53. What you closed out to, at today was 81.27. You got down to a low of 81.08, so you're still inside that little, you know, candle. It's not even a swing point. You know, it's an area where the market gapped up, but the uh, small caps are the ones that were leading the charge on the way down. Let's go to our first caller. Let's go to Mike in Massachusetts. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Mike, you there? Yeah, I am. Oh, great. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. Hey, Mike. Uh, we, Tom O'Brien and I, we're coming up to Boston on March the 3rd. We're doing our Go Long America Tour, and I hope that we're going to be able to see you out there. I'll tell folks more about that in a minute. You wanted to take a look at the bonds. Tell, uh, tell me what you're looking at. How can I help yeah, you? Yeah, well, I, um, as, you know, I got out of the S&P at 1330 last August, and, um, you know, I got, I got back in at 1150 and got scared of those 5% whipsaw days. Okay. So then I, I was listening to Tom. Yeah. And I went into bonds, long and intermediate bonds in, in October. And, and when you okay. say, were you trading the futures market? Are you trading the TLT? Uh, no, no, this is uh, 401k money. Okay. So it's all mutual funds. Okay. So I've, been, I've been sitting in, in bonds, uh, you know, waiting, waiting for the 30% move. <laughs> down to two percent you know got it okay all right okay so what i'm thinking now is uh you know tom was talking about the 146 right you know i think there's going uh, intuitively i think there's going to be a failure at the 146 okay because the volume seems to be drying up on the on the way up today okay well, you know what you, what, you, what you do have you know what you do have on the uh, bonds here let me uh, push that up in the 146 and 149 quite frankly it depends on whether you're looking at the 20 year the 30 year you know, I've got the 30-year Treasury up here, and yeah. what 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 the uh, bonds have been doing has just simply been going sideways. You know, yeah. and they've been yeah. doing it. They've, yeah. been, they've been building calls really going back to November. Well, I, shoot, I can make a case that the bonds have been moving sideways all the way back to August of 2011. You know, right. so this thing is building some cause to bust one way, if you will. But ideally, you know, I, I still think, you know, you say 146, 146 just gets us back to the tops of the December area. I think yeah. that on bonds, at least on the 30-year, you know, I'm looking for a nice pattern to set up here in the 149 area. Okay, okay. But what I'm thinking is it's, the volume's going to dry up and there's going to be a failure. And it's going to coincide. Hopefully this is a retracement on the S&P, maybe a 382. Hopefully. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist here. Yeah. Yeah, um, you, you're um, talking about today's action just being a, or what are you talking about as far as? No, in the next in the next week or or whatever. Yeah, there's going to be a retracement on the S and P. It's been going straight up since Thanksgiving. It okay? absolutely has. Yes, it yes it so, has. I think I think bonds are going to fail at 146, 149, or whatever, and the S and P is going to do a 382, and the volume is going to dry up, and then it's going to. S&P is going to take off for, you know, 1400 and beyond. Yeah. Well, hey, I love the optimism. And, you know, and look, when, when the S&P, 
uh, folks, the SPX, what it had was it had a Gartley cell pattern. And that Gartley cell pattern uh, completed right uh, around the 19th of uh, January, and it was 1.272 expansion. Hopefully, you know, you're watching this on Tiger TV. And when that area fell, and when it, when, when it fell, when it failed, I should say, you know, yeah. it failed on February 3rd, and it broke through. It didn't break through with conviction on volume, but it did break through with conviction on price. And, you know, we'll, look, a, 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 a pullback, uh, you know, a small retracement would be nice here. You know, get rid of some of the overbought uh, territory. But today was an indicator that there still isn't enough volume to push this market down. At least that's my call at the moment. Okay. Uh, All right. So you, you don't see a 382 in the cards right now for the oh, well, You know, I see, I see areas of resistance. But today, when you go take a look at the, uh, you know, the ETFs, in fact, I, I don't think I can pull up the weeklies. But, you know, when I take a look at today's action, there is, uh, and we take a look at what went on with King Dollar, if you will. Let me uh, pull up the uh, King Dollar chart here as soon as my eyes can uh, locate it on my screen here. Um, where is King Dollar? Uh, there we go, King Dollar. And, you know, it was really all about the, uh, about King Dollar was all about the euro, if you will. And, you know, you, now, what I will say is that what the dollar index, the U.S. dollar index, folks, what we're talking about, it did make another bullish engulfing uh, today. And that's an important sign because if you go back and you take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar chart, you will see a number of bullish engulfings, and I haven't found any that have failed on this charge up off the bottom when we were coming off the bottom in the U.S. dollar back in May 2011. But, Mike, it's been great to talk to you. I know we're going to go to break here, and uh, Tom and I will look forward to seeing you in Boston March 3rd. You picked a good winter because we only have eight inches of snow this year. Last year was 88. I'm going to hold you that to my uh, my friend. I'm going to hold you to that, or I need you to bring me a shovel and some The gloves. average is 44, so I think we're there. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend. Folks, 877-927-6648. That was off 89. We'll be right back.